Tanya Nat that I hope that was in the minority. And, and, I, and known Australians, I believe that was in the minority. Mm. Unfortunately, it was picked up by the media. But it doesn't look well uh, when, when people are making these comments. And, and, it was, and, and a lot of people get, get g'd up about these things. I remember in local government, when we, when we had to look at uh, uh, the setting up of brothels and that we, uh, the light, uh, that, we copped a lot of flack over that stuff. But, you know, that was a law, that it was a planning law, and we had to deal with those issues and pass them. Right. And I hope that, th that this situation didn't occur because of the xenophobia that was there. And it was there. And I think we need to, we need to now push forward. The, the proponents of this need to look at the, the planning laws. I, I believe that they're going to take this now to the Land Environment Court and hopefully it can be sorted out from there. All right, let's go to the audience. There's a gentleman up the back there. Yeah, uh, in relation to Camden and uh, Bass Hill, uh, the Australian Protectionist Party want to know why the town planning laws can't have a provision for a cultural impact statement or a social impact statement where the residents can say, we don't want this, we don't want our suburb invaded by Muslims. Can I, can I say... Yeah. The, Go ahead. Uh, I'm, Tanya, please, <laughs> a sec. Um, the, I, I was listening um, to the ABC this evening, Tony, in the car, um, and they were interviewing some residents around Annan Grove, where you remember there was a prayer hall set up a few years ago. Louise, yeah, yeah, the right. similar story that you told, um, there were pig's heads left around the site and so on. They went around now um, some, I think, 18 months after the operation of the prayer hall started. They couldn't... Um, <laughs> went down to the local shops. Have you had any impact on your life? Are you worried about this? All the residents there saying, actually, no, the people who come in here are very polite. They're very good neighbours. Everything's sorted down. They had 8,000 objections up um, at, at Annan Grove to that proposal and uh, seems to be working very that, well. Louise. So I just want to... Yeah, but they've already had changes to Annan Grove to have longer operating hours and late nights, so it's just... A, it's, 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 it's creep. No, Planning okay. creep. I, 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 this is a fear that I have, what this gentleman's doing. Uh, Tanya's right. Uh, I, I think we need to get away from, uh, you know, saying this is, this is only a suburb for Muslims, this is only a suburb for Christians, this is only a suburb for white people, this is only a suburb for black people. I think that's bizarre. It's not the Australian way. We've always mixed, we've always got on well together, and I think we need to leave it like that. <laughs> okay. Well done, Warren. All right, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why, sir, because uh, Muslims. Australian Muslims, like other Australians, love their children. They want them to have a good education. They're absolutely great citizens of this country and they should have the same rights as everybody else to be, have their schools where they want them. One, one, Islam is not a race, so it's not racist okay. to oppose Islam. All Two, right, no. in Iran, you'd be hung. Hang on a sec. We actually got another question. Yes, you can in a moment. We've got another question, however, from uh, another former resident of, uh, of Camden, Kate Gautier. Yeah, I actually I grew up in Camden, so I do speak from some cultural experience. She speaks Camden. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have to put on the accent. Um, while some people have been hiding behind the planning laws to reject the Islamic school, isn't most of it just really poorly hidden racism? All right. Yeah. Well, who would well, I think, I, I, Tony I think I, Look, there is no doubt some people who like to protect their own and feel a bit hostile to that which they think is different. I mean, that's not uh, a particularly rare phenomenon, but I think very few Australians are actively racist. Um, whatever initial instinct most Australians or many Australians might have, I think over time, the great thing about our culture is it is inclusive. Um, and, I, I mean, it, it's unthinkable that the gentleman up the back would say, we don't want Catholics coming into our suburb. But, latent, but, latent... but once upon a time, they might have. But, you yeah. see, we've got over that. And, I mean, over time, hopefully, we'll get over this other thing. I think latent it's easy to, to, mm. um, to move away from the very difficult question by talking in generalities. But maybe you could address the specific issue here of whether, in this particular case people have been responding with racism. I, I, I'd be very reluctant to come to that conclusion. I know you would be. <laughs> OK, there's a gentleman down the front here. We'll go I'll to explain you, why. Mm -hmm. um, over 15 years ago, exactly the same situation happened in Campbelltown. A mosque application took nearly 10 years to get through the courts. The council knocked it back on planning uh, recommendations to actually have it approved. They knocked it back because of exactly the same type of opposition we're hearing on now. 
That was then taken to the Land and Environment Court. The Islamic Society of, of, of Campbelltown won that case, yes, and they made the decision right. not to proceed because they felt that the level of racist response was actually detrimental. They waited till the church became available for sale, bought it, and didn't have to resubmit an application and got a thing. Now, the point was, John Marsden's company at the time, the legal firm representing the residents, spread material which was absolutely extraordinary in terms of its racial hatred. It was fed. And this is the situation. And we have to look back at how we've actually positioned Muslims in Australia and Arab Muslims in Australia, and the previous government should not get away with this scot-free because they have fed the absolute fear of difference from that. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that as a comment. There's a gentleman uh, there in the uh, first row there at the, with the uh, tie and um, the beard. My question's for Tanya, and it's uh, what's your government going to do to help reverse the sorts of attitudes that Tony Abbott's government helped bring about? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we're not going to feed the fear. Yeah. Good. Um, good. That'd be a change. Uh, look, I th I think that um, that. It's plain that we have a government that um, is looking to govern for all Australians and um, we want to have um, an inclusive society. The things that we've done, like opening up Parliament House to the 2020 summit and inviting all comers to give their, give their ideas about what the future of Australia should look like, I think they're very important first steps in building a, uh, a really cohesive Australian society. We've put social inclusion on the agenda. It's a main priority now of the Australian government, social inclusion. Never thought I'd hear those words. Um, yeah, so... All right. I actually would like to throw that to Tony Abbott. I think there's a right of reply there because uh, your government was accused of engendering fear in the community. Yeah, and, and look, I think what we've heard from Tanya with respect is a lot of waffle, basically. Um, <laughs> typical of the right government, if I may say so. But, but look, this, this idea uh, that the Howard government uh, were a pack of uh, closet racists is, I think, you were defamatory. You were right in the front, leading the pack. I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I, I think you're proving my point, frankly. I mean, you guys are living in a different world and in the real world that the Howard government that the Howard government inhabits can you, sorry can we let, in let in the, if we, the, want, if we want to hear what Tony Abbott has to say we should let him speak in, in the real world that the Howard government inhabited we ran a totally non-discriminatory immigration policy um, we massively increased our immigration intake we tried to ensure that everyone who came to this country was made to feel a first class part of the team and when it comes to Indigenous policy, with things like the intervention, I think we got right away from the old, failed welfare policies. Uh, we started to do the sort of things that smart people like Warren Mundine had been urging for years, but it took the Howard government to have the guts years. to do that kind of thing. I'm going to take one more comment. The gentleman who's had his hand up there for a while with a white shirt. Thank you. I'd just like to say to our friend out there who's being invaded by Muslims, I'd like to say merhaba, inshallah. Nice to meet you. I live in a new suburb, and in, in my street in particular, every, everyone comes from every corner of the world. I'm married to a Muslim, so I speak Muslim. And I'm also, <laughs> and I'm also Australian and British. So uh, welcome to my world. It's a fantastic place to be. Okay, now that is actually a good place to leave that subject. Now you're watching <laughs> Q&A. <laughs> Q&A with Tony Plibersek, Tony Abbott, Bob Brown, Warren Mundine and Louise Adler. Next week we'll have a completely new panel to debate the issues of the day. If you want to be in this audience, in our Sydney studios, register at abc.net.au slash Q&A. That's Quanda. We had some online problems last week to stop people registering, but we really do want our audience asking questions, putting their views to the panel. So try again. Go online at abc.net.au slash Quanda. But now to our next question, and it comes from Chantelle Morrison. If you had the opportunity to have a personal butler, <laughs> would you have one? Or perhaps a stylist or a personal shopper? <laughs> OK, uh, this is obviously... <laughs> this question Thank is obviously... You, <laughs> I, I need a stylist. <laughs> and I don't question... trust myself to shop. Hang on so... a sec, hang on, hang on a sec. This question is obviously referring to uh, the focus in uh, Senate estimates right. on, uh, on whether... The Prime Minister has a butler, whether his name is Jeeves, <laughs> whether, whether it's just a personal assistant, and how many John Howard had when he was travelling overseas, for example. Tony Abbott, is this fair enough or a strange obsession on the part of your Senate colleagues? Well, well certainly um, 